sponsors. This year we had more sponsors than we've ever had. And each of you in an appropriate way. So as I call your names, I'd like for each sponsors to come forward and receive your certificate of appreciation. So our first uh, certificate is Jerry Ellsworth and Rick Johnson for Cast AR. And this appreciation for that. Okay, this is for Jerry. This is for Rick. And we have a certificate for you as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Stephen Soley of the Amiga Users of Calgary. <laughs> Oh no, there's more than one. No, we got at least two. Lens <laughs> here too. Lens here too, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So much. Trevor Dickinson of A.E. Young. Thank you very much. There we go. It's the track color. Whatever, whatever it means to you. Um, we also have another one for Mr. Soli from Hyperion Entertainment Software. Before. This, before. Before. Hyperion. Yes. That's right. They didn't show up. I did. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so Timothy and Costco and uh, what's his name decided to stay where they are. There was the uh, a really big, nice surprise of uh, Bill Borsari of Emmy West Broadcast. You. Oh, you bet. Thank God. Okay. Okay. Do we get about seven? Oh, it's Sack. Sack. We'll give it. We'll give it to Dave. Seven point. And we also have a medallion uh, for now. We here at Sack are the other sponsor, uh, and so we also have a medallion to give to Dan Klosko, uh, representative for Sack. Thank you, sir, for all of your incredible labor all year long. Uh, <laughs> As most of you know, this is our 18th show uh, consecutively, and uh, we have every year presented two club awards to people in the club. Now, after a while, people in the club have gotten multiple awards. Uh, so, uh, at this point, we uh, have decided this year to give uh, our awards to people in the Amiga community who are significant people, uh, and without whom we would not be where we are now. So, first is the Ken Barton Award, uh, which, as a club award, has been for service to uh, Sacramento Amiga Computer Club as an organization. Uh, this year it is to an individual uh, 
in an organizational sense, but much larger than our club. The Ken Barton Award for Outstanding Service to the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club for 2015 is presented to a man who has done more than most to support and develop Amiga OS now and for the future. He is an expert in the information technology field, currently working on the innovative cutting edge in the IT in industry. He has worked tirelessly to promote Amiga OS and the use of Amiga throughout the world. He is always brainstorming new approaches to marketing Amiga OS and wants to see the Amiverse continue and thrive. He volunteers his time and expertise, patiently explaining to non-technical users the features of Amiga OS and eagerly sharing his Amiga knowledge and expertise with the most technical users as well. And finally, he continues to enhance and promote Amiga, Amiga internationally in his work with Hyperion Entertainment and other developers. The Ken Barton Award for 2015 for Outstanding Service to the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club and to the Emmyverse is presented to Stephen Sullivan. John Zacharias Award is, made, is named for a past president, as I'm sure many of you do. Know. Um, and John Zacharias was also the president for a few years. Um, and he, along with Michael Salcedo, and another uh, member of another club, actually started this show in 1998. Um, so John has been. Uh, remembered as being very central in the history of our club. The John Zacharias Award for Outstanding Technical Assistance to the Sacramento Amiga Club, a computer club for 2015, is presented this year to someone outside of our SAC membership. He's a hardware guy from way back with a serious interest in maintaining good Amiga equipment in good condition. He has spent a lot of his own time, money, and effort promoting Amiga in many ways throughout the world. He's a great classic Amiga fan. He is always respectful of those who aren't experts in this field, patiently explaining to those who don't understand so that they can understand the subject at hand. He is most personable and always seeing the positive aspects of whatever situation he is in, no matter how tenuous it may seem to others. He cannot stand idly by and see Amiga progress stop, investing his own funds to be sure that Amiga hardware and software development is fueled for the future. The John Zacharias Award for 2015 for Outstanding technical assistance that matters Amiga to the worldwide Amiga community is presented to Trevor Dickinson. Thank you. We wouldn't be here without you. You know that. You bet. Oh, that's right. We forgot to give you your big plaque. It's more? Yeah. <laughs> that's the Ken Barton Award. Sorry. I. Yeah, there you go. Oh I hope it won't take you over your package allowance. <coughs> exactly, exactly. <coughs> now, typically, yeah, that's right. Often we have, yes. Uh, I'd like to give uh, acknowledgement to a friend of mine who has been, uh, for the last three years, been helping the hell out of me. And uh, Kenny, Kenny, come up here. Come on, Kenny Smith. Usually we have somebody uh, of note within the community to speak, and uh, 
So as I was thinking about that, we had all, also asked a lot of the people in the room to speak uh, at our banquet. So this time we had uh, last, uh, actually almost the last moment, been offered a uh, an opportunity to show a version of a movie that some of you may have already seen called Viva Amiga, made by Zach Weddington. This includes additional material you have not seen, uh, and we can pretty much guarantee that. So, um, without further ado, we will uh, a uh, Viva Amiga, as Paul calls back there to do something with it, um, and then after the movie, we will have another special feature. Now, before we all depart tonight, in this room are many of the major players in the Amiga community in the world today. Uh, and uh, I think this gathering has been special in that regard for many years, because we've had many of those people here over the years. Uh, so what I'd like to ask of you individually is to talk about how the Amiga first captured your attention and why it's still done. Uh, so I have a mic someplace uh, that uh, can see if we can get to go here. Because we'd like to, uh, we have a room full of presenters here. I realize that. You all speak uh, in various situations, just as I do. And uh, so we'd like to hear and why you're still interested. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> who would like to go first? Okay. Go for it, Paul. Is this Paul Resendez? All right, so let's start again. So, again, I'm Paul Resendez. I've, I've been involved with the Amiga since, since I was 12. And again, like I said, I'm 43 now. Um, wanted to get a computer growing up. You know, my parents, it was tough. They didn't want to do it. Um, my parents are actually involved in a circuit board community. Uh, my mom designed some of the boards for the Atari VCS, the cartridges, uh, from a, a really small company called CCI back in the day in Santa Clara. They, they got bought out. Um, so I was involved. It was it surrounded my life. So paper routes, mowing lawns, cleaning people's backyards for them, whatever it took for me to get it. I finally was able to get one a year after the 1,000 release. I ended up getting it used. Um, I got a 1000 and I built that thing up from just <laughs> from I mean you guys have seen the 1000s what they could do I I put that thing through the ringer as far as it would go I put a Phoenix board in it when they first came out and I loved it I took advantage of the trade-in program that Commodore did for the 3000 when it came out so I, I sent it in and I got a 3000 and I had that forever brought it all the way up to having a Cyberstorm power PC in it it died, I sent it in, it went into the hole at DCE, and I was just devastated because I never got it back. I ended up getting another one and built it up. I put a mediator, mediator in that thing, and some of you guys have probably seen my pictures that I posted, the Big Book of Amiga, all the mediator stuff with the L-Box Tower, all those pictures are mine. Uh, I, I mean, I loved that thing. I did it great. And then, and then Morph OS came out, and I just, you know, back in the day when the Amiga was dying, I, I joined the Navy. When, when I was 19. Um, I stayed involved with the Amiga all the way through. Uh, in the Philippines, I found Amiga users groups. I visited them. I, I found, I got about a 1200 when I was over there that was stored in some warehouse forever. One of the magic packs, brand new. Um, so I mean, I stayed involved with the Amiga. I've never left it. Um, I got involved with MorphOS just because they were doing new things at the time. Um, I got involved with Bill Buck quite a bit. Uh, we were pretty close friends. I talked to him quite a bit. I still keep in touch with him. I know how some of you guys feel about him. <laughs> but uh, hey, as a person, he's a great guy. As a business person, he's probably a little bit ag more aggressive than he needed to be. But the guy was, it was amazing. He got me involved with the Pegasus II. Um, that was my first Amy West, actually, when it was launched. I don't know if you guys remember. I sat in the far back and came here with, uh, who was it, JKD was the user that used to come here. I can't remember if he's around anymore or not. I lost touch. But we demonstrated it, and I mean, I absolutely loved the machine. It was great. Um, OS 4, I couldn't really afford the machines for it, and 
I got a good deal. I ended up, I ended up selling my 3,000 to somebody in Canada who I was told was wanting the, it was their machine of their dreams. And of course, as all of you guys know what happens when people tell you that, I fell for it. Sent it to them for 400 bucks um, with the CyberStorm, everything in it. About two weeks later, it started popping up on eBay, piece by piece by piece. And that, unfortunately, it really, it, it kind of put a, a boot in my rear end of how I felt about Amiga users. And I, it really devastated me. I was pretty pissed. Um, so I kind of turned away from, from the Amiga side of things and strictly went more for us. And, and I'm back here. Ami Kit, I, I absolutely love. I get tons of stuff from them. The um, Amiga Kit, uh, the Ami Kit um, developer, or the software for the emulation, I absolutely love it. It's on every machine that I own. Is I, I made it work on a Mac and everything. So I'm, I've, the Amiga has always been a part of me. And, and what what attracts me to it from the beginning was the community. Uh, I was in, I was a member of Fog back in the day. I was a member of Bog. If you remember them. Um, uh, I mean, I, I just Jay Miner. I, I talked with him back when he ran his, his the mission uh, quite a bit. Um, I helped him beta test the when he came out. I forgot what it was called, but back when it had the you know before the web came out, he had he was one of the first websites that had a mouse-driven interface where you actually click on the menus and stuff to get in into the bulletin board when he had the mission going up, which was blew me away. I loved it. That was back in what '90. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've been around. You, everyone sees me on the forums. I'm Ackle on the forums. Uh, I've been around since Amiga.org was, was brand spanking new. And so, like I said, I may wear a more for this t-shirt, but I, I'm, I'm an Amiga through and through. Okay, well, I guess uh, uh, my uh, acquaintance with Amiga was an act of God. <laughs> it's, it's true, it's true, it's true. <laughs> I was living in Texas in Houston. Um, I had a Commodore 128D you know, um, attached to, uh, you know, obviously slow modems in those days, probably 1,200 board. And it, you know, it's a bit, you get a lot of lightning in, in, in Texas. And the house was hit by lightning and it destroyed my 128D. So I looked at my insurance policy and it said, Acts of God. So I thought, oh, right. And I, I, and I was into, I mean, I, I was using Geos at the time on the 128. And I liked it, so I was into mouse and uh, windows and things. I had, uh, was it the 512 or 256 RAM expansion unit? So I thought, hmm, and I was looking at all the Commodore magazines, and I saw this Amiga thing, and it was you know, getting a bit of news. So I took the insurance money, and I got an Amiga 2000. Oh, God, that was fantastic. It was a big, ugly brute, you know, and, but it was so expandable. I filled in every single slot I could fill in. Nothing changes, really. And... Uh, <laughs> And I was just blown away by the, you know, the video, the graphics, the, you know, the sound capabilities. And uh, I started using it for business. So uh, initially a 2000, and then I had to have the 3000. And the kids used to joke with me, because as, as I upgraded, the kids got the, the other machines. So all my, my, both my girls went through high school, and they did all their homework and projects on an Amiga 2000, which was my first Amiga. So I got a 3000. And you've got to remember, back in those distant days, they were not home computers. People didn't have home computers. They weren't PCs at home. They were too expensive, especially in Britain. Maybe in the USA they were more common, but they really weren't common in Britain. People were still using Commodore 64s in the, you know, the late 80s. Um, so 3,000 and 4,000. I introduced 3,000 and 4,000 to my business, and we used them for desktop publishing, for video graphics, for all the publicity work, for all the technical manuals. So for me, it was... It grew up with me. It grew as my business grew and became very tough at the start, became very successful. The Amigas, although they weren't a, a critical part of the business, they were what I used to produce all the publicity material. So for me, it was really, really important. And uh, it's kind of stuck with me. I guess it's like um, <laughs> you always remember your first kiss, your first girlfriend. Well, the Amiga was my real first girlfriend and so, oh, <laughs> so that's all I want to say thank you well hello my name is Wayne uh, this is my first year here so uh, if you don't recognize me that's fine I've, I've tried to introduce myself to some of you the last couple nights um, it's 
this is a great group, group of people. I've really had a lot of fun so far. Um, so for me, the Amiga was kind of the thing that kind of came at the end of my Commodore obsession. So I, I started out as a, uh, I got in school, uh, we had Commodore Pets, and I, I just fell in love with them. You know, I just, uh, I would stay after school to program on them and, and write these little, you know, interesting games and anything I could, you know, do, do for that. And uh, like Paul here, <laughs> I had to save up to get my own computer. Couldn't afford a pet, so uh, got a VIC-20. And uh, that led to a 64, which led to a 128, which then the Amiga came and, and you know, just blew everything else away, so in my mind, and uh, had to have one. Um, never was able to afford a, a, a 1000, just still a young kid working through school, so uh, when the 500 came out, got one of those, and that led uh, to a 2000, that led to a 3000T, uh, and then a 1200, and uh, eventually owned my own Commodore dealership, and uh, we were an Amiga dealer, and we stuck, stuck with it right up through the bankruptcy. Um, at that point in my career, I decided to make a change and go fully into the software side of things and uh, went off to the first of the PC and then to the Mac. And uh, just a couple of years ago, I saw, thought, kind of got to thinking about, I don't know what the Amiga is doing these days. And so I went and started looking into it and started seeing you know, all the stuff that was going on. And it's like, wow, there's really quite a bit still going on. It's pretty neat stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just now getting back into it. And... Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to get the next 5,000 here as soon as they're ready to go. And uh, I want to do some development and just, you know, kind of back into it. So, anyway, thank you. Okay, here's, here's one that I'm personally curious about. Mr. Soli? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, he has nothing to do with you. Oh, I know what you get into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, yeah. So, a um, little history, I guess. Started with uh, Vic 20, 64. Um, actually, immediately started writing games. That's, that's what happened to me. I think I wrote a, yeah, it was this little ball, ball bouncing game on a VIC-20. You know, uh, you break the bricks at the top, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, paddle on the bottom, break out. Break out. Break out. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was it. That's, that's what I did. <laughs> Instead of playing things, I started building things. Uh, Radar Rat Race, I remember that one. That was a good one, a VIC-20 program or game. Um, 64, then I became a full-time pirate. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I paid for a single piece of software on the 64. <laughs> and I had 1,000 games. <laughs> ah, yes. I, uh, I don't know if I should see this on camera, but I actually sold some in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if Epics and EA are coming out after me, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> made some extra cash on the side. <laughs> then the Amiga 1000 came out, and um, my computer science teacher had one. And uh, I went, ooh, I need one of these. <laughs> they demoed it at school or something. And uh, I got one of those somehow. I don't remember how. And immediately got a C compiler. <laughs> it started compiling with the floppy shuffle. Yeah, remember those, those days? Nothing fit in RAM, so you had to put the compiler in, take the compiler, put your program in, take your program in. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> yeah, one floppy drive. Who can afford two? <laughs> so, so. <laughs> yes, you you always needed it, but you you work with what you got sometimes. Um, yeah, so I started building things, and I think that was around grade twelve-ish area. So. I remember um, I was allowed to do C and everyone else had to do Pascal. <laughs> <'Cause> I, was, <laughs> I 
I was already coding the thing in C, which is a new language, and <laughs> everyone else was stuck on Pascal. So uh, that was the end of that. <laughs> they went to university and uh, eventually got a 3000, which was uh, 3000D, the best box ever made, I must say. <laughs> Agree with Paul. Fantastic machine. Totally maxed it out with accelerators and everything. It was overheating like mad. So I installed fans all over it to try and move air out, and it was noisy. <laughs> I, that. I think I had a couple of them. Eventually, um, I remember selling it to a, some guy in Winnipeg, the 3000D. It was a sad day. It was a very sad day. Here's what the probably same guy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I never did get much money for that either. I mean, probably the same guy. <laughs> Is it Manitoba? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Vancouver. Oh, yeah, it was those guys. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, then uh, Commodore went bankrupt, and then I just went, ah, forget the whole thing. Dis disappeared for a while. And uh, I don't know how in the world I got sucked back into the Amiga stuff. Amiga 1 XE, I think it was. iTech? Yes. Yeah, I think somehow I heard about it. I went, oh, new Amiga. It'll run Linux, too. Awesome. <laughs> Had to have that, right? Turned out it didn't run Linux. <laughs> the North Bridge was broken. <laughs> and then later I found out the South Bridge was broken. So that design wasn't as good as it could have been. <laughs> Uh, we didn't learn that till late, 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 too late, far too late. Um, then Amigo S was ramping up again, so we got sucked into that somehow. Beta testing, yeah. No, no, um, Fleecy Moss. Remember that name? Fleecy Moss. Um, I was writing articles, and he noticed it, or I emailed him, and I said, hey, I'll write articles for your Amiga, what the heck was it called, uh, some newsletter? that they used to put out for about a year, I think, yeah. right? And I said, I'll write articles, but I need access to the software. <laughs> <laughs> so I got s s put on the beta list as a reporter, right? I started doing that for, I don't know, was it a year or something? And uh, later on, things, I don't, I don't remember the order of events, but things went wrong <laughs> at some point. And I, I started testing the software as well, like legitimately testing and not just reporting. Uh, there was that $50 t-shirt deal in there. Remember that? I'm a lifetime member though. So, you're a lifetime member too. See? See? Yeah. Yeah. Are we lifetime members? Yeah. Oh, the room's full of them. Oh dear. Yeah, we gotta go talk to McEwen about this. <laughs> we owed some money. <laughs> you never got your t shirt? I got mine eventually. I don't know how many years it was. Yeah. Leather jacket? It was a raffle prize here one year. Yeah, yeah. Which I won. You won the leather jacket? Oh, that was like a $200 jacket or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow, wow, yeah, good good times. <laughs> anyway, fast forward a bit. Now I'm, uh, I'm uh, the self-proclaimed Amigo S team lead. <laughs> I made up my own title. <laughs> so, why not? <laughs> so I, I still program on the OS proper now, like the actual code, um, for fun. Not, not profit for sure. Um, and it, it's a good relaxing uh, ex escape from the regular mundane world of embedded software engineering that I usually am in, where, uh, where it's kind of gone full circle. I work on a 8-bit PIC chip with uh, 8K of RAM. So, <laughs> yeah, so, that's pretty big. <laughs> the, the big chip has 30K of RAM. Yeah, <laughs> that's the biggest one I work on. Um, <laughs> I also worked for telecom for a few years, 13 and a half. Uh, Nor Nortel, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, so uh, 
nowadays I, I help out um, uh, Trevor with his uh, crazy exploits, really. <laughs> and, uh, and the Hyperion as well. <laughs> yep, and I uh, still enjoy it, but it's more, more of an escape for me now. Um, you know, from the regular Windows, Mac, Linux, you know, whatever world. I still use all these tools, of course. I mean, he's well, they're there, right? But uh, I still like running stuff on the Amiga. <laughs> Working on that thing there. Yeah, 4.1, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, so. Yeah, still like it. I'm sure you've heard the story of my many Amigas and how I got into this crazy market. And it all started on the Commodore 64 initially and um, progressed. I had to save up for my Amigas, much like yourself, do lots of hard work and chores to get, to get enough funds for my Amiga. And my first Amiga was the 500. Um, it later progressed quickly to the 12 because it was a much, much more capable machine. Um, I, I think the 12 was my favorite computer out of, out of the lot of them. Um, and later on, I was crazy enough to, to set up a, a meager retail business and I've been doing that ever since. Uh, recently, as you know, I've got involved with Aeon so now we're doing next generation Amigas. Uh, the uh, X1000 was my first taste of uh, um, a next generation project and I came in halfway through the project and um, it's, it was a bit of a um, difficult project to, to come into at the time. Um, but. Uh, recently, you might have seen the X5000 we've progressed to, and I've been beta testing that uh, since it's since it uh, was been developed. Um, I've had a SAM 460 as well, so I've had a, a fair fair amount of machines over the years, um, and I'm enjoying using Amigo S 4.1. Uh, um, I've used Morphos as well, so so I'm accustomed to that. So, um, yeah, I've used pretty much every Amiga under the sun. Uh, and Actually, what's your accounting system or your shipping system running? My shipping system runs on Amiga as well. But uh, <laughs> and So, um, I've been involved as well with the Amistore project and been using Hollywoods uh, to program that. So, I develop on the Amigas as well. So, that's it. Okay, uh, in 1986, I was um, told that my computer software was no longer viable for the graduate school program I was involved in. Uh, my professor didn't like the way it uh, did things and said, um, unless you get something that can give me a better appearance on a term paper and do endnotes and do all the rest of that stuff they expect in graduate school, uh, then you're going to fail my class. So I went out looking for a new computer, and I was using a Commodore Plus 4 at the time. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so <laughs> that's what I said a lot, too. Uh, <laughs> I'd actually started in personal computers on the Coleco Atom, for those of you who have seen that thing. Um, had a printer with it, daisy, daisy wheel printer, uh, and pretty nice interface, really, for an old computer. But... Uh, so I went looking for computers, and I was working at the same school where I was going, one of the faculty secretaries, and I was using an IBM PC every day, and knew I didn't want to go there. So I had heard about another store that handled something else called the Amiga, and I went and looked, and found the same thing everybody else found in 1986, and bought one on an Amiga 500, still have it. Uh, it's pretty tricked out at this point, but uh, so I've... Along the way, I, I continued the same sort of split personality thing. You know, whenever I had to you, use it for work, use it for software I needed to run, I would use, you know, the foreign operating system. And then when I wanted to do the things that I wanted to do, the way I wanted to do it, I would, came home and used my Amiga. Uh, and so that uh, continues to this day. Um, when I came back here uh, to Sacramento, I landed in 1998, 
and was driving by the old Ramada Hotel down there. I said, welcome, Amigans. And I thought, what is that? So I went in and found Amy West, the first one. And uh, with uh, Michael Salcedo and uh, uh, Cindy and John and uh, Alan Crandall. And so uh, went in and found uh, uh, another 400 people who were there that day, uh, along with, I think it was 18 vendors. Uh, pretty insane, about uh, half the facility needed. Uh, so you can imagine there were things, people running out the doors, you know, and people set up in the courtyard and strange things were happening. Uh, but it was fun, it was a lot of fun. And I finally got to who these people were that put this together, and that's how I became involved with the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club. So um, <clears throat> that's when I joined, it was 1998. Uh, several years later, uh, John uh, got into such ill health that he had asked for the club to take over, and I was president at the time. So I've been doing it ever since, which has been about 11 years now. Um, so that's where I've kind of you know, come from. I wish I had had all of the funds along the way to buy all the fun stuff. And so as uh, having my email address listed on the club website, people started to contact me occasionally. Well, I've got this old Amiga, but I don't want to throw it away, and I'm looking for a good home. Do you know of one? Yes, I know of one. So now I have a fairly prodigious collection of machinery and software. Uh, some 27 machines at this point and uh, many, many, many pieces of software uh, that people have given me. Um, so it's been kind of fun and I've also received donations for the club. The club also has a rather prodigious collection of software and hardware. Uh, for those of you who have ever heard of it, it's called The Abyss. Uh, and um, it, that's what it looks like. I was just there the other night, Tuesday night as a matter of fact, uh, picking some stuff up. It's a thousand square foot house stacked floor to ceiling with Amiga. And, uh, so, and most of it's hardware. So uh, we've got, we also have software and books and uh, everything else that you might imagine that has Amiga stamped on it uh, is pretty much there. <clears throat> so that's how I came to it and still really enjoy it. Um, and I, I like to, if nobody else wants to, everybody, all minds blank, I mean clear? Everybody, I, there's, there's one other person that I would like to invite to speak. He's probably one of the newer users here. Uh, and I, I'd like to find out how he got involved because I don't know. Um, so LD, would you mind telling us about that? Hi, my name is LD Stevens. And uh, uh, let's see, how did this get started? Well. Uh, my first computer was actually a Commodore 64, and it was when I was four. And my father at the time, he was a printer, and uh, we didn't have a whole lot, but he worked really, really hard because he thought, you know, this might be something useful for the boy. So he bought me one, and I proceeded to write a couple games for it, and I wrote actually a disk operating system for it uh, when I was seven. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, <clears throat> we'll put that down there. That's a little bit better. Um, and then we got into, uh, I got into Macintosh computers for years and years and years and years and years and loved them. Spent a lot of money. Um, could have bought a couple cars, really, with all the money I spent on those things. <laughs> and um, about 2001 or so, um, which is about the time that I joined IBM, uh, Apple transitioned over to OS X, and I didn't really like that very much. It was a shame because for years and years and years I used to love to go home from school and run home and use the computers just to use them because they were like a hobby. It was fun. And I sort of stopped. And then about 2009, I guess it would have been, a friend of mine sent me an email and said, uh, did you know that the Amiga is still alive? And I said, no, it's not still alive. The company went bankrupt more than a decade ago. And he sent me a link to an article. And apparently there was this company called Amiga Inc. And they were coming out with this thing called Amiga OS 5. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. But it hadn't shipped yet. And there was also this thing called Amiga OS 4. But I couldn't buy it because there was some sort of lawsuit. I thought, okay, well, I'll just leave that alone. And then a few months later, this fellow right here announced uh, at, at Amy West that the lawsuit between Hyperion and Amiga Inc. Had, was over. So I thought, okay, so maybe I can go get one of these things. And I saw on OS News a review of a SAM 440. And I saw Elwood's YouTube videos on the SAM 440, and I bought one. 
And I just thought it was brilliant. This thing had racks. I'm a mainframer, so I love racks, right? And I can control everything with racks. And it was beautiful to use, and the icons were very pretty, and it was a spatial metaphor, like the old Finder was. And you could, you could configure everything without having to write XML files and property lists, and it was just absolutely fantastic. So I got the SAM 440, I got a PEG 2, I got a next 5000 now, there's some more stuff. Basically at this point what I do is when I get bonus money I just turn it over to Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you something that's kind of interesting. So I've, I, I actually worked on um, Power 6, I was a unit lead for that, and I've worked on a couple of other processors for IBM. The latest one, my latest baby, is the, the Z13 mainframe. And uh, one of the little tidbits I'll tell you guys, and uh, a few people know this, but uh, actually, believe it or not, part of that chip and part of the bring up of that system was done on an Amiga. I actually got to the point where I pestered the CIO's office for so many times, so long, they actually gave me a waiver for some network security uh, garbage, and they put in a specific router for me to use so that I could bring my Amiga to work. So, as a matter of fact, Trevor, <laughs> your Amiga 1 X5000 beta helped to develop a machine that cost somewhere around $11 million to buy, so well done! <laughs> Okay, I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> cool. Now tell us what you do for, for, for work. Oh yeah, I'm a processor designer for IBM. I've worked on, let's see, Power 4, Power 6, all the Power 6 systems, Power 6 Plus, the processor in the Z10, the processor in the Z196, which has my memory system called RAIN, by the way. Uh, the uh, the uh, the ZC12 and the ZBC, whatever the heck it is, the mid-range version of that, the Z13, and some more is coming on the way. So, uh, for those of you out there who happen to be running, you know, small stock exchanges on the side, come look me up if you need anything. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Okay. So. Well, I think you can see that we have a couple of people here. Presentation this afternoon about how he used the Amiga in art school. Uh, and I know there are many other stories here uh, that I hope that you will share for the rest of the weekend with each other. Uh, and I know Ken Lester's doing some great work. Uh, and there's also Alice Carmona. I mean, all these, everybody, Morris, a whole bunch of people have been involved, Val Marty. Uh, uh, Alan Flippenbank, Fred Wright, there's just a whole bunch of people doing stuff. Chris, uh, Darren Stevens back there, who we forgot to acknowledge, uh, thank you for coming in from the UK for our show. Um, and, and also Renee Olson from Denmark, I, a special guest with Friends of MUS. Thank you, Friends of MUS, and Renee for coming. So, you can, and each of us knows at least 10 people. Uh, you know, the influence that we have is much larger than this group appears to be. And that's one of the things that I always try to sell to people when it comes to, you know, building up attendance in Avenue West. Now, obviously, if we're going to get too many more people in here, we're going to have to have something bigger place to hold this thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that that happens in the next few years uh, because uh, we do need a larger place. Because otherwise... You know, we have no storage, so we have to put things under the table. It doesn't look very good. But it is, uh, it is very creative, and every one of you brings a piece of that with you. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. In fact, we would have no reason to do it without you. And uh, we really hope that uh, you will be keeping track of our website at nus.net and sac.org, uh, as well as uh, uh, the blog at uh, nus.net. Uh, slash two, 2016 MUS blog, which will become active in January. Uh, so you're still going to be trying to keep that blog going all year long uh, with uh, news and views of the next MUS next October. So uh, make your plans now uh, to come back next year because we will have a show. We never announced one that canceled, so I guess we're in the habit of doing this. Uh, and thanks, thanks also to the sponsors, because without you we couldn't do it. Uh, you know, the, the uh, facilities are not cheap. They're not expensive either, but they're not cheap. And uh, 
So we, we really appreciate your commitment to, to traveling all the way, and, and many of you have traveled a long way to get here. We really appreciate it. We try to make it worth your while. So um, I'd also like to, to tell you about some of the new club members that we gained uh, only because of who they are in the, in the uh, past of, of Amiga. At Amiga 30th, we signed up uh, eight new club members, and three of them uh, were part of either the original Amiga team or the Amiga 3000 team. Uh, so uh, they're, uh, they're Joe DeCure joined, Sam Dicker joined, and uh, Don Reisinger joined. Uh, so you saw Don Reisinger on the screen tonight. Uh, and they're all very interested in, in attending here when they can. They all either live in the Bay Area or Washington State. Um, and also Dave Morris has joined our club, and he'll be uh, coming in as well. So uh, we have a lot of new members, and you're all welcome to join. We'd like to have you join. And we're trying to get a better web presence so that you can gain from that membership. And I think, Chris, you joined too, didn't you? You know, oh, okay, all right. I saw somebody else name. I, I, I thought I did. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your input. Thanks for everything that you do for all of us. Uh, and uh, and thanks to the guys who, who who got the machine going so that we could see Viva Amiga tonight. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, and uh, we'll we'll open tomorrow at ten o'clock. Our first presenter is Trevor Dickinson. Thank you.